This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Someone has remade Photoshop from the ground up in a web browser. It's called Photopea and it works. How has Adobe not sued this person into oblivion? Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. Today we are looking at this app, Photop, which is a complete recreation of Photoshop done in a web browser. It's also completely free. Now this is not like Medibang or Fire Alpaca that's very similar to Photoshop, but recreated. No, this is feature for feature, a recreation of Photoshop. Now not every feature is there, but enough is there to make you really think, wow, this is this was a lot of work. So this is what it looks like. You go to the website, you scroll down, it's free to use. There are ads along the side, very nice. Makes this person a little bit of money for all their hard work. As you can see now, there is a lovely Adobe ad on the screen. That's kind of funny. This was created by someone named Ivan Kutzker. Ivan did a Q&A on Hacker News a while back, and it, this project's been around for almost two years now. I just became aware of it. And when he did this Q&A, he had said over the previous 12 months before then that he had made over a million dollars with the ads in this app, so good for him. Now this has been around for a while. I'm a little surprised that Adobe is letting him keep it up. I'm actually very surprised since it is a feature for feature copy. The interface is identical. We're gonna be running through it because if you do need to use Photoshop but you don't wanna pay that monthly fee just to edit an image or open a file that somebody sent you, this might be the resource that you're looking for. I'm also curious, can this be used as a drawing tool? We're gonna to get to that too. So the first thing I have here is is a new file and you'll see along the left we have all of the tools that you're used to. I just have a brush tool open here. Uh, we have our selection tool so it works identically to Photoshop. I can grab my move tool, I can move my selection around. I've got all of that fun stuff. Over on the right hand side we have our history and our layers and some of our, our type panels and things like that. Now this doesn't have some of the slick UI that you might be used to on the desktop. For example, I can't like double click on the history panel to collapse it or anything like that. I'm gonna go up to file and I'm gonna go ahead and open a document. I have a PSD saved on my desktop. It's a fairly large file, so this is gonna take a couple seconds to open because it's gotta upload it. But once it's in here, I can export this back to my desktop or I can work on it. So let, let's take a look. This is the image that I drew in Procreate, saved as a PSD, and, and then I used it as a thumbnail for my latest Brad's Art School video, which is all about color theory. Now with my animations, I tend to do a lot of my illustrations in Procreate and then port them over to animate them in Adobe Animate. And so you're gonna see in this file, I've got layer folders that are turned off that have a bunch of stuff in them that are images that were used in that last cartoon. I am going to scroll down to this folder, which is my active folder. And what's interesting here is I can use all of my shortcuts. If I hold down the shift key and then select my layers, it's gonna allow me to select all my layers. Um, let me see, do, if I press M, or what is the move tool? V, hold on, let me try this. I think if I press V, yep, it switches to my move tool and lets me move that around. It's surprisingly not that laggy either. I can hold shift and it's gonna actually align. So this is the way I go about making my thumbnails. So let's check out the text tool. I'm going to say type tool and I'm just gonna click here and I'm gonna say color. And then I'm going to, let's see, grab the move tool. And if I hold down option, can I copy it? Look at that. So this works identically to the way Photoshop works on the desktop. If I double click on the layer, is it gonna, it selects the text. I can type in theory and hope I spell it right. So let's take a look at the text tools and see how many of these text tools are here. First of all, I think this is gonna capitalize it. Yep, that's what I'm looking for. We have our fonts. Now it looks to me like this is pulling from some kind of free font resource and I don't see my desktop fonts on here. Uh, this is just gonna pull from the web. So if I had a font that I wanted to use in this, I would be able to load it. You can do that with brushes too. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. So let me go up to here and go to edit free transform. And then let's see if I resize it and I hold the shift key. Yep, it resizes the right size. I can move it around. Yeah. Pretty impressive. So the other thing I want to look at is I'm gonna go over here to Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to grab some graphics and I'm gonna hit Command C, which is gonna let me copy. So if I hit Command V, it's gonna paste those things that I just grabbed here. Now if I go into Photoshop and I hit Command V, it's gonna give me some options to paste that in there so I can paste them in as pixels or smart object. It works fine. I work like this all the time when I need some vector assets to throw into a design file. Um, but one thing I have noticed is that when I paste it into here, 
it's not remembering, you know, what's on that clipboard, which is something that's super useful for, for my workflow here on the desktop. You can still copy and paste, but it's copying and pasting things from within this app. Let me go to a website really quick. I'll go to brad.site slash learn where I keep all the discounts to my courses. Then we'll go back here. And now let me grab that text tool. And I was able to copy that text. There we go. And so when I copy and paste from the web, some things will copy and paste over. It seems to just not realize like things that are coming from other art applications, which that's some pretty advanced stuff. But what about the brushes? What about drawing? Okay, let's dive into that. But before I do that, I, I do want to shout out today's sponsor, Squarespace. Having a website is great. Having your own domain makes that website even better. But what really makes Squarespace the all-in-one platform for your online presence are all the marketing tools and analytics baked in. Grow and engage your audience with Squarespace's email campaigns. Create powerful email content that matches your website with your existing products, blog posts, and logo so your message is consistent and effective. Quickly understand your audience with Squarespace's website analytics, including page views, traffic sources, time on site, most read content, audience geography, and more. Give feedback on what's working and how you can improve. Squarespace takes all the guesswork out of search engine optimization for your website, which means you'll get found in search by more people more often. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bragkolbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, so let's take a look at how this thing is to draw on. Now, I have a tablet here. I have my pen. And if I go back to the screen, you're going to see me drawing here. And yes, when I draw on the tablet, I can create a line. Now, those of you who are used to drawing on a tablet, you might say, oh, that's just kind of a crummy line. Where is the pressure sensitivity? Can it do pressure sensitivity? And the answer is yes. Up here along the top, there are two buttons. One is like brush pressure which gives you a darker brush if you press harder. So there's your pressure sensitivity. If you press lighter, you get less of, uh, of that transparency. And then we have another option, which tapers the line size based on how much pressure you have. So as I apply more pressure, I'm going to get a thicker line. So as you can see, this is, I've, I've been moving pretty fast, but I'm still getting you know, some wave and there's some blobs at the end of my brushes. This is not what I would consider a good drawing experience you know it's probably because it's in the browser um the lines don't look that good Ooh, yeah i'm getting a lot of like jagginess to those lines i would not recommend this for drawing and art i think there are better options out there medibang fire alpaca are both free in fact i made an entire video talking about free apps that are out there that you could use if you're just learning art you don't want to invest a lot of money in your tools yet what about other devices obviously this is in the browser so anything that can run a web browser can run this application right well so far well i mean i, I only tested it on two devices but so far yeah that's Pretty much the case. I tested it first on the iPad. All of the functionality was there, and if I'm being honest, I found this to be more useful than the actual Photoshop app in terms of doing graphic design type things, just because I know where everything is and how to use it. Now, I am very keyboard shortcut oriented, so if your iPad doesn't have a keyboard, this isn't gonna help you out as much, but, ha but if you do have a keyboard for your iPad, it this could be extremely useful. What about using the Apple Pencil on it? Well, that was a different story. Uh, the Apple Pencil doesn't seem to have any kind of pressure sensitivity or it's not detecting that the Apple Pencil is there. You're also getting the same caliber of lines, like I said with the, the Sense Pen that I was using a little bit earlier. The same thing is happening with the Apple Pencil. The lines just don't, don't look that great. So again, iPad, this is not for drawing, just more for design, layout, photo editing stuff. I also tried this on the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. Uh, had a little bit more luck there. I thought that was pretty good. It has an option where you can turn it to full screen mode, which is really nice. In fact, in some ways, it looks like it was designed specifically for something like an Android tablet. When I used the Wacom Power Pen on the Android tablet, I found that it worked much, much better than the Apple Pencil did. So I found that using this on Android was just as functional as using it on the desktop. The one thing it did better than the desktop was how well the pen performed. I was genuinely surprised. It's not great. It's not as good as using, you know, an app on Android. However, if you want to draw in Photoshop on Android, this is the way to go. So this is pretty crazy. Obviously, I was only able to go over many of the surface 
features here. I, I didn't deep dive into anything. I think if you're looking for things like smart objects and, and some of the more advanced features that Adobe has done, you're not going to find it here. But those core features, the basics that you expect from Photoshop, they're all here. And if you're used to the same keyboard shortcuts and workflow, and that sort of thing, again, that's all here. I was really surprised as I was working to find that my workflow was just, I, I took to it really quickly. There was no learning curve because I know Photoshop so well. So what do you think? Have you ever checked this out? Will you check this out? It is free. Why not? If you don't mind having a couple ads on the side of your screen, might be worth a shot. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.